been waiting a long time to make this video, ladies and gentlemen. A long time. Today's video is to let everybody know what's going to happen in 24 hours. Only impacts patrons, but I feel the public is going to be fascinated to see the results and to follow what happens so that you can make fun of me, ridicule, or call it the biggest scam in history. So if you're not familiar, it's the two-year anniversary of Flesh and Blood. Yeah, thumbs down, do what you want. But you should seriously hear this. I've been waiting a long time to do this. So we're going to play a game. We've been wanting to play a game for a long time. And this tiny little fancy little box here, kind of kind of plasticky maybe, kind of thing. So it's the, um, it's a couple art cards and an old promo from a long time ago. And today I'm going to share the story of how we got here and why the story needs to be just told to the world of kind of what in the world happened behind the scenes. Sit back and listen, folks, and let's get into it. And then I'll explain the fun game we're all going to play that takes place in 24 hours. And then you all can watch the uh, experiment and the results unfold live on eBay and the open market, and we'll see what the world does. And uh, for the people who really dislike flesh and blood, really dislike me, you'll really like this video. Please feel free to share and report the biggest scam in history. So a long time ago, James White, who created the old Flesh and Blood Legend Story Studio situation, um, the Alpha WTR boxes came out two years ago in uh, 2019. I think it was like second quarter 2019, I believe it was. Originally, when James pitched the game to the world, in late, probably fourth quarter 2018, as we rolled into 2019, I think it was, he stayed up. Remember, he's in New Zealand. Huge time zone difference. So the gentleman stayed up almost all night and contacted 1,500 approximate stores across the United States. He stayed up all night New Zealand time to reach and try to make contact with all these people in the U.S. due to the time zone difference. He even sent out almost a 1,500 retailer appreciation kits, which today on the open market is worth one to $2,000, just as the retail appreciation kits and the lore book and how fancy the packaging is. Out of those 1,500 stores that he contacted and reached out to, 1,455 told him to pretty much go F off. Wouldn't give him the time of day told him didn't care Be why because most new ccgs fail usually they pump they dump their scam that's why the market believes that that's why the market is very bearish well ironically about three percent of the 1500 stores he reached out to gave him a chance and talked to him and you know bought some product this and that kind of ironic three percent about the same amount of female viewers in the magic community and the uh, magic players according to non-Wizards employees and sponsored people. Ironic um, similarities, isn't it? So, the guy was rejected by about 97% of stores and people. Uh, the other three out of five major distributors in the United States, besides two of them, three out of five, um, wouldn't return his call, wouldn't talk to him, wouldn't reply to the emails, wouldn't do any of that stuff, and wanted nothing to do with the Legend Story Studio Flesh and Blood launch in 2019. Hence, it's which has led many people on fancy private Facebook groups and Reddit discussion boards to complain and get very angry because they don't have access to the product because three of the five distributors gave them the middle finger and therefore Flesh and Blood was not able to be spread through three of the five distributors in 2019. As the game grew, obviously that turned out to be the very, very, very wrong decision. And I believe those three out of five distributors have reached out to him on a regular, consistent, weekly, monthly basis now. And James is a uh, very old-fashioned, mafia-loyal, and um, that it kind of means a lot to him, the people who actually believed him and trusted him. So unfortunately, Flesh and Blood continues to be distributed in the United States by two of the original distributors that gave him a chance and believed in him from the very beginning. So... Yeah, so that's the original story. That when I first talked to James on the phone a couple of years ago, God, maybe it was three years ago now, in 2018, 2019, he had already sent me a retailer appreciation kit and some demo products and things like that to, um, to the store. 
And I looked at it and I thought it was interesting and I was actually really impressed by the card quality and the retail appreciation kit, the lore book, and just, it was just really well made. And I wasn't used to seeing that. So that caught my attention. When I talked to him originally on the phone, the guy was almost beside himself and giddy and like surreal that I actually wanted to run a promotion and make the very first alpha promotional kit that contained two alpha WTR first edition boxes, a starter brick, um, the original play mats, original, I don't have any, uh, Ira, original Ira welcome decks, and a couple cold foil promo cards. And I remember very distinctively about the conversation that he was more, he was so surprised that I was willing to give it a chance. He couldn't, that was the dominating factor of the conversation that I actually wanted to do it. And he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. So I later find out many months later, this is still, this is now beginning, of, this is probably about first quarter 2019, I think, maybe second quarter 2019, um, that he created one of the original promos next to Go Bananas. If you go to the Fab TCG Collector Center database, there is a non-tournament legal specialty cards um, that are kind of like part of the game's history and historical events and things like that. Well, one of the original ones, the original LS, the 001 card, right before Go Bananas, under the non-playable cards, was kind of the, the Rudy meme type card that James had created with a famous magic artist, and uh, Magic the Gathering artist, and he had created this card after watching an old video on my YouTube channel, this was years ago, uh, when I made a video in 2016 discussing that I wanted to buy out all the PSA 10 gem mint cards. And he thought that was a great way to kind of have a funny symbolic thing for working with him and taking a chance and actually giving him a real chance in this world and believing with him. He thought it would be a great idea to make a card that was called Rudy, the gem keeper type of card. Because I wanted, it was kind of a meme of, because I wanted all PSA 10 alpha cards back then. So, flesh and blood, obviously, having all these uh, fabled, super hyper rare gem cards between the heart and the eye and the, uh, the shard and the next one coming. Um, we thought that would be a great idea to have the card that was based around hoarding the gems and that kind of thing. So, um, hence, the, this promo card was born a long time ago, years ago. And um, we recently designed this special fancy case and packaging uh, by the same company that made the retail uh, appreciation kit type thing. And in with inside of it, you have a couple things where inside when you take the lid off, you actually have a special folded container that contains the original promo card, which is kind of a, in like a really nice hard case there. And then of course you get three, you get three actual art cards of the, uh, I'll hold them up for you all, of the original three gems. So, which was, I thought was a really cool, nice touch. I didn't know he was going to make this for the packaging. And on the back, in the gold font, you have the story of the original three fabled items. And of course, you have uh, the infamous quote between me and James. And James, of course, it states that, you know, the objective of, it all, of all of this was to bring people together through the common language of playing and investing together in great games. Now, of course, just so you know, behind the special packaging, there's actually a little hollow bottom. The hollow bottom comes out and actually reveals preview art underneath of the fourth fabled gem card coming in the future. So, just laying that out there. So, anyways, uh, I will put, I guess, a digital version of the Rudy card so you guys can see it all in its fancy glory on the screen. Now, here's where things get really, really fun. I know most people probably aren't watching this far. Get some down and run away. This is where we're all going to play a game. The original idea of this was to allow... There's a, the print runs approximately 1,500. No, I have not counted every card. I have not lay them out and count the whole brick. So plus or minus a couple percent margin error. Might be a little less, a little more. I don't care. It, it's like a brick seal. So the original objective was to actually grade. We, me and James discussed 
the idea was to grade all like 1,500 of the Gem Keeper card and actually keep all the PSA 10s and destroy the non-PSA 10 Gem Keeper cards. Obviously, that's no longer realistic with the grading in the world changed in the last 6 to 12 months because PSA, they shut down grading, the backlog, the Pokemon, collectibles, emojis, rockets, moon, draw, washer, dryers, everything's just been a mess. So that idea had to be scrapped. Although I really like the idea of having all of them graded, destroying all the non-10s, and just keeping PSA 10s. And then, <laughs> doing the same type of promotion. Obviously the box will probably have to be a little bigger to hold the PSA 10 slap case. Um, since that didn't work, James had given me the idea that a long time ago, and he showed me this little video where he had, after manufacturing and engineering the Heart of Findale, the original Heart Fabled card from WTR, he had to destroy all the excess versions of the card. So he shredded all the original hearts, the excess ones. It was funny because he mailed out some of the shredded material. So then I thought, well, in James and Rudy, you should literally, you know, sell a couple hundred of the card and then literally shred and destroy the rest of the cards. So that was, a, that was the next kind of plan of attack. Now, obviously, in the last 12 months, or about 15 months ago, Flesh and Blood went insane and viral and expanded, unlike anything that the company, James, LSS as a whole, myself, or anyone, any store distributor could ever imagine. Nobody, we didn't know this was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to happen. James didn't know it was going to happen. The companies, distributors, nobody's ready for it. So when that happened, obviously we had to reassess the situation earlier this year, probably about March, April. Some patrons will remember those messages. And we had to determine, okay, I'm not going to hand pick which couple hundred patrons I should be allowed to offer the product to them. Oh, and before we go any further, it's $1,000. No more, no less. $999.69 just for the washer and dryer. I haven't decided if we're going to do a limit one or two. The price is high on purpose to discourage purchasing. And to create anger and negativity. And so that people would spread and discuss this far and wide and really be upset about it. That is the engineering of this product. It is a publicity stunt. It is designed to make people who already dislike me and flesh and blood become very upset and re and be polarized. That is the objective here. Now, by setting the price at $1,000, and by the way, the $2,000 price point is if you buy two. It's just funny that way. So the objective here is to allow the patrons to decide what the card is worth. Now, this is a self-balancing game we're all going to play here. Now, those of you who are not a patron, you're watching, you get to see the results in the open market. So this is the way it works, folks. It's expensive. Most people are not going to buy. I do not expect it to sell out. My instinct, I think a couple hundred copies are going to sell in the market, and the rest of them will be destroyed. Now, original idea was to put them through the paper shredder, like James had done originally with the hearts, but I kind of like the idea of laying them out and kind of burning them, like putting lighter fluid on them and letting it burn. I thought it would be more poetic. And then after that, once they dry and air out and they'll let it sit for a while, I'm going to have them professionally framed of all the burnt scrap pieces with a plate and the date and the story of all this. That's the objective. Now here's where the kicker gets really fun. The more the patrons believe this is a scam, overpriced ripoff, the less they will buy. The less they will buy, the less cards will exist in the world. This is a self-balancing, almost a self-fulfilling direction. So essentially, let's pretend option A. Only 100 patrons buy the card. They pay me $1,000, they pay me $100,000. Great, well, before shipping fees, fraud, people are going to steal, return, disputes, whatever. So let's say that happens. Okay? That means the other approximate 1,400 copies will be burned and destroyed, and those lucky 100 people are going to have a very, very rare and valuable card. Interesting, huh? Um, full disclosure, I do plan on keeping 10 copies for myself, family, and my son. Just to let everybody know. Um, now, the next thing is, most likely scenario, a couple hundred sell, maybe even 500 sell. Great. Thanks for the money. You can put into the game. can expand. The packaging alone, the custom packaging and designing of the art cards and things like that, costs about $10,000. Gave James an extra $6,000. So about $16,000 was the packaging air freight, because again, the shipping container logistics world's a disaster. So the packaging alone... I paid Legistory Studios $16,000 just for the packaging. 
Now, what is going to happen? That's what I want to know. What is the what are the patrons who do purchase and take a leap of faith or jump into the pool of being scammed or make a lot of money? What is the card worth? I don't know. And I'm going to let them decide. I encourage the patrons who want it and believe in the game and believe in something rare to buy two of them. And I encourage them to flip the other one. I want to see the market fight. Now, let's pretend for that Black Swan event, maybe they all buy. Maybe everyone gets crazy and there's so much money sloshing around and some of the patrons really are doctors, surgeons. They got so much money, they're just blowing it. Maybe we do sell all 1500 Maybe it actually runs out. I don't know. But on the sale of the patrons, I'm going to launch the sale tomorrow night, which is Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Central Time. Eastern specific time, as they say on Family Guy. Specifically Eastern. Sorry, no meme. Serious video. And at that time, we're going to run the sale. I'm not going to say any messages or any data from the point the sale launches. Not if it sells half, 20%, 50%. There will be no updates on the sale until either A, the sale and the card completely sells out, or B, 24 hours and one minute goes by and I cut it off. Once the sale comes to an end, no further cards will ever be placed into circulation and the cards, the remainder, will be destroyed and I will send out a message letting people know exactly how many sold and then you get to watch the remainder of the brick laid across the grill and we all get to, I'll probably, we gotta get some good music to that. It's just literally a video of burning. It'll be a good video. Nice and poetic. Poetic justice, right? So the question is, ladies and gentlemen, what's the card worth? How many patrons will buy? How many patrons will get scammed? And is the card really only worth a dollar? The magic community states that all cardboard are just game pieces. All new game pieces should remain cheap. Legend Story Studios feels the same way, but that's why they have unlimited edition. That's why cold foils and first edition is segregated from unlimited. So the question is, how many people will be upset? How many threats will I get? And how will the game unfold? And that's, ladies and gentlemen, is what is about to happen. And boy, do I cannot wait to see the comment section. And I cannot wait to see people's reaction. Because it's going to be a fucking glorious, glorious, just battle of the Spartans. And it's going to make you feel alive. And I hope this video drives an emotional response from you. And again, I thank Legend Story Studios and James for giving me the opportunity years ago to be a part of this whole thing from the beginning. And it's been amazing. And again, nobody thought this was going to happen. And now that we're going to move forward in the world, in flesh and blood, prices are going to be more calm and normal and not going to crazy. Everything's calming down. The question is, where do we go from here? How do you evaluate something? How do you establish a price? How do you, how do you establish a value? So that's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you to all the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of patrons and thousands and thousands of patrons who support me and who've allowed me to build the cardboard empire that many of you never even buy anything. You just want to talk about personal things and business and finance and saving and good life choices. And then many other people don't do anything. They just want to watch the world burn. And you know, maybe the world does need a joker. Maybe the world does need. Sometimes, sometimes the playing field needs a little shakeup. Sometimes the world needs a little competition. And sometimes it, the world does need rare and special things. And someone's got to put the face to it. And someone has to be willing to walk directly into the Chuck Norris fist. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you hold my hand. And I hope you experience it with me. It's going to be a great day.